In this video, we are going to talk about what happens when two hurricanes collide. Every June through November, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration reminds the public that it only takes one hurricane striking the coast to make it an active hurricane season. But can you imagine two hurricanes striking simultaneously? On rare occasions, two tropical cyclones can actually track close enough to each other to pair up, an event known as the Fujiwara effect. The name for this phenomenon comes from Japanese meteorologist Sakuhei Fujiwara, who was credited with first describing this hurricane interaction around 1920. Although, according to the Japan Meteorology Agency, it's possible Diro Kitao was one of the first scientists to conceptualize the idea in the late 1800s. History buffs will appreciate the fact that one of the first observed instances of two hurricanes merging came in the World War II era when typhoons Ruth and Susan delayed General MacArthur's plans to land occupation forces in Japan in 1945. Today, though, the Fujiwara effect remains a rarity. It only occurs about one to two times per year in the waters of the Western North Pacific, and even less often, about once every three years in the North Atlantic Basin. One of the most recent Fujiwara interactions was observed in April 2021, when tropical cyclone Siroja fully absorbed tropical cyclone Odette just off the coast of Western Australia. How does the Fujiwara effect happen? A number of serendipitous events can encourage Fujiwara interactions. If a basin is especially active, for example, tropical cyclones can crowd a particular region of the ocean. Troughs and ridges in the upper atmosphere, which act as barriers in a hurricane's track, can also steer storms along similar paths, thereby increasing the chance that they'll cross paths. Even the speed of individual storms can lead to meetups. Fast-moving hurricanes can race ahead catching up to storms that formed days earlier, while slow or stationary hurricanes can churn in place, waiting for passers-by. While each of the above situations helps position two tropical cyclones side by side, it's the physical distance between them that determines whether or not they'll interact. For the effect to take place, they must pass close enough to each other, a distance of roughly 900 miles or less, which is about as far apart as the state of California is long. Once two hurricanes become adjacent and spin this close together, one of several scenarios could unfold. When storms of equal intensity meet, if the binary cyclones are fairly equal in strength, they'll usually rotate around the area of ocean centered between them, spinning in a ring around the rosy manner. Eventually, the pair will either have an elastic interaction in which they fling away, continuing on their own personal paths, or they'll merge into a single storm. When a strong and a weak storm meet, if one hurricane dominates the other in intensity and size, the two storms will still dance. However, the weaker storm will generally orbit the stronger storm. As this rotation occurs, the larger cyclone can tear away part of its smaller neighbor, causing it to weaken slightly, a process known as partial straining out. Such was the case during the 2010 Atlantic hurricane season when Hurricane Julia which was a Category 1 storm at the time, flanked Major Hurricane Igor too closely. Igor's outflow battered Julia for a couple of days and eventually weakened it to tropical storm intensity. The larger cyclone can also weaken the smaller cyclone to the point of dissipation, complete straining out. When this happens, the smaller cyclone is usually lost to the atmosphere, but the dominant storm can also partially absorb the weaker storm, growing slightly as a result. Potential Impacts as unsettling as the thought of twin tropical cyclones is, meteorologists stress that a megastorm scenario shouldn't be expected. At least not a megastorm the likes of which are portrayed in Geostorm, The Day After Tomorrow, and other disaster films. A low number of hurricane interactions result in the two storms merging. And even when storms do merge, the effects are rarely additive. That is, a Category 2 and a Category 3 Storm won't necessarily combine to form a Category 5. What coastal residents and vacationers should be aware of, though, is the possibility that Fujiwara storms could trigger a last-minute change in a storm's path, since each storm affects the other's movement. And this means less of an opportunity to prepare before the storm, or storms, make landfall. It seems as though we're currently in the brunt of hurricane season, with tropical storms wreaking havoc on coastal cities almost weekly. 
In fact, early next week, the forecast predicts that two storms will be blowing through the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. And obviously, those living in communities susceptible to tropical storms are wondering what will happen. Will the two storms cancel each other out or join forces to create one massive storm? Stay tuned for everything we know regarding the seriously shocking phenomena of two hurricanes colliding. The result is unlike anything we've ever seen before. What happens when hurricanes collide? There are a few possible outcomes. With two predicted tropical cyclones blowing through the Gulf of Mexico next week, many in tropical communities are worrying about what will happen if the storms ultimately collide. The prospect of the two storms joining forces is definitely harrowing, but apparently it's happened on two previous occasions, according to WBRZ once in 1933 and again in 1959. So what does this mean for coastal cities and areas susceptible to tropical storms? Apparently, when two hurricanes cross paths, they don't quite team up to create one massive storm, as one might imagine. They actually experience something called the Fujiwara effect, which was studied and founded by Sakahe Fujiwara, which shows what can happen when two hurricanes collide. Sometimes they start dancing around a center area, which can sometimes create an even larger windstorm. Other times, if one storm is stronger than the other, the smaller one will orbit around the larger storm until the larger storm absorbs it. However, if both hurricanes are somewhat close in strength, they will slowly gravitate toward each other, eventually reaching a common point, spin around each other and ultimately part ways. Therefore, the two storms never end up joined forces at all, ultimately part ways. Therefore, the two storms never end up joined forces at all. How are hurricanes formed? All of them form in the same exact way. All hurricanes, aka tropical cyclones, are formed when warm, moist air rises up above the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean from near the water surface. Less air is left near the surface, which causes air containing higher air pressure from surrounding areas to start pushing into the low pressure area. This air then starts becoming moist and rising as well. With an influx of warm air continuing to rise, surrounding air starts swirling in its place, and while warm, moist air is rising and cooling off, the clouds begin to form. The clouds and winds start spinning together, and voila! We have a hurricane. NASA's satellites can then track the storms, and the wind speed ultimately classifies what level hurricane it will be. We're certainly hoping the Gulf of Mexico hurricane next week ends up blowing over, literally, and ultimately doesn't happen. But if the two storms come from opposite directions and collide, we now know what to expect. Needless to say, we'll be keeping up with the Doppler radar on the Weather Channel. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for future updates. See you in the next video.